Example 8.3, what it does here is it talks about a cookie jar is moving up an incline at 40 degrees. At a point 55 centimeters from the bottom of the incline, the jar has a speed of 1.4 meters per second. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the jar and the incline is 0.15. Question. How much further up the incline will the jar move? How fast will it be going when it has slid back down to the bottom of the incline? So what, do, what am I really asking here? Well, we're really asking this question, right? How far, how much further up the incline does it go? So let's draw a picture. Okay, so let's sketch the situation. So here's my incline. So I have an incline. And of course, this is at 40 degrees. And then I have two packages. They say that at point 55 centimeters from the bottom of the incline. So I need a box. Okay, so let's get a box. So here's my box. It's right here. And it's saying at 55 centimeters. So if I look at this thing here, this guy from here to here is 0 0.55 meters. Okay, it's 55 meters from the um, bottom of the incline. And then this thing is going to slide up the incline. So that means at some point, it's gonna get up to all the way to right here. So what do I know about that 55 centimeter point? Well, for starters here, I know that it has some speed. We know that that speed here has a speed of 1.4 meters per second. And then it's saying, if it's trying to get to the maximum height, let's call this point number two here, we expect here that at maximum height, the speed is then going to be zero here. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm going to assume that this initial distance here is going to be zero. Okay, actually, I'm not going to put that right there. So I'm going to define this. Actually, I think I'm going to change my colors. I'm going to say that this point is x1 equal to 0. So when this thing moves up the incline, it's going to do what? It's going to travel a distance of what? x2 from our x1 position. So when I'm looking at this thing here, what I'm really seeing is that that's sort of like the sketch of the situation, but now I got to look at my system. Let's go look at my system now. So my system, of course, is this whole thing right here. And then I'm asking, what are the forces acting on the system? Okay, so what forces are in the system? Well, clearly, we have the force of gravity down. Why? Because we have to include Mother Earth, right? The incline is part of the Earth, and so therefore, that's what it is. Do we have any tensions or any spring forces? The answer is no. But we do have another force. That force is what? The force of friction. So what I'm seeing here is that we could say then is that friction is a non-conservative force that 
removes. We know that it, it releases, it, right? It slows things down. It changes um, energy into heating. It increases the speed of the surface of the molecules. So it removes energy from the system. So in other words, we know for a fact that if I have energy one and I have the work of friction, that we know for a fact that has to be a minus sign right there. So we know it's gonna reduce the energy here. So let's do our bar diagram, okay? If I do my bar diagram, what do I expect here? I think what I wanna do here is that I'm gonna take this and then I'm gonna re erase some of the things. But if I start to look at this thing here is that, what does the bar diagram look like? Well, here's what we know. So if I stick this guy into here, I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, let's try one more time. Wow, really? Okay, let's do it. So if I do this again, here's what I see. Here's my incline. And then I have my blocks here. And then my block's gonna go to there. What's a good location to make my height equal to zero? I would say that a good location here, because it's all relative, I would make my height equal to zero right here. So I know this thing has kinetic energy because it has speed V1. So I'm gonna say that this guy has what? It's gonna to have to have this amount of kinetic energy right here. So this has kinetic energy K1. And just to make sure, I'm gonna call this point number one. I'm gonna call this point number two. And when I look at this system here, I'm saying that I purposely do this a little bit higher because look what happened here. I know that when I get up to here, I'm gonna have this amount of gravitational potential at two. But you can see that there's a block that's missing. So in other words, I know that one of these blocks has to be the frictional force here. And you could see that I'm drawing it in the negative direction. And that's what the work energy theorem says when I add things here. So my picture from my bar diagram then says this here. You could see that what the work of friction did is that it removed energy from the system. So then my equation then says, here I go. Look at this. Here's my initial energy. Here's my work of friction. And then here's my energy in my second situation. So this means here that I have to account for that negative sign. So then what is my total energy in the, to begin with? Well, it's K1. Then I have the work of friction. And then the energy afterwards is all potential energy. In other words, it's got to be one half m v one squared minus the work done to friction times the distance that it travels equal to m g y two. So what do we want to do? Well, you could see here is that we know this thing here. Okay, we know this. This is known. This distance is what we're solving for. But note that y2 is also part of the distance. 
And the reason why this is the case here is that we're also solving for y2. The question is why? Look at our triangle. So if I look at my incline, right? If I look at my two blocks, let me set up this little triangle right here. And if you're looking at this little blue triangle right here, this is the same triangle right here. And you can see that this angle is still 40 degrees. This height is then going to be the height that the object moved. But note, this distance, I called it x2. And then over here, I called it d. Well, that's the same distance. So you could see here is that if I solve for y2, what am I having here? So what you're seeing here is that if I solve this trick problem, you could see that this is the opposite angle. So I'm gonna have y2 over x2 equals sine of 40. In other words, y2 is then x2 sine of 40. So that means then I'm also solving for that y2 over here. So now that I have that, I could then go in and finish my conservation of energy equation now. So, so from energy, right? Here, hold on a second. Okay, so let's see, did I write? So this says, so one of the questions in the chat says that it's 0.55 centimeters. No, it says 55 centimeters. So I wrote 0.55 meters. So I think that's okay. Okay. Okay, so just to make sure. And then here's the, so now what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna use energy to determine x2. So if I look at this thing, look what I have. I have 1 half mv1 squared minus f of k times what? x2. Then on this other side, I'm going to get mg x2 sine of 40. And you can see now I could go in and solve for this here. So I'm going to bring over the frictional force and write that out. And so then that means here, then I'm going to isolate x2. So if I isolate x2, I'm going to get two terms. I'm going to get the frictional force plus mg sine of 40, and that's going to equal 1 half mv1 squared. So then all I have to do then is to divide both sides by that uh, quantity in the, in the bracket here. And you, we see here is that we then get that x2 is then going to be f of k plus mg sine of 40. And then I'm going to get 1 half mv1 squared. So that's what x2 is. So now, what do I know about this problem here? Well, 1, oh, look at that. I don't have the mass. So let's deal with the mass term. Look at f of k. It should be mu of k times the normal. Since I've already started using the angle 40, I'm going to keep using the angle 40. So if you do a free body diagram, so remember, use a free body diagram to get the normal. We know that the normal in this case should be balanced out by mgy in this case, it's going to be mg cosine of 40. So I know that the normal is mg cosine of 40. So then I could write that the normal then is then going to be mg cosine of 40. So then if I put that back in, look what happens here. I'm going to get m. oops, let me be careful now. It's got to be mu k mg cosine of 40 plus mg sine of 40 divided 
into one half m v one squared. Look at the mass terms. The masses all cancel out. It's mass independent. So then what I'm gonna do here is that I know that mu of k is 0 0.15, v1 is, I believe it's 1.4 meters per second. And I think that's it. So if I punch that in, I'm gonna get a value of 0 0.13 meters, which is the same as 13 centimeters. And that's what my, that's the distance that it travels up the incline. Okay, so I now have that. So let's go to the next piece here. So the next piece that we have here is that we're now looking at part B. So let me add the question again. And so now we're here on B. And so when we look at B here, you could see that this is the piece here. And the question that it's asking is how fast will it be going when it has slid back to the bottom? Well, there's an assumption. And the assumption is what? That static friction is being overcome by the weight. Right? So the fact that the, the assumption here, we, assu uh, we assume that MGX is greater than the maximum static friction. So therefore it slides back down. That's the only way that could be true. So let's go look at this thing. So what do we know here? Well, if I look at our previous picture, what we have here is that we have an incline and we know that this object started from right here. And this is what we initially called zero. But now what we're seeing here is that the block did what? It went up a certain height. And this is the height that it went up. And the height that we see here from this point is that this height was 13 centimeters. So if this guy gets all the way back down, so we're gonna say here at this point, V2 is equal to zero. So if this gets all the way back down, then we know that when it reaches this speed here, it should have some speed V3. But we also know that this distance from here to here is what? 55 centimeters. And of course, this is my angle 40 degrees. So what's a good choice? Well, what I would consider a good choice here is that I'm gonna label this guy to be what? my point two, and I'm gonna label this one to be my point three. So you could see here is that I probably wanna choose my reference here, y3 equal to zero. So then ug of three is also equal to zero. So then I can draw a bar diagram right away. Well, we still have friction acting on the system. So we know that there's external work. So when I look at my bar diagram, what should it look like? So my bar diagram should look like this here. So I could see here is that this is the height here and this is the bottom here. So what we expect here is that this thing starts off with a certain amount of gravitational potential energy, this UG. And we know for a fact that there's going to be work done. How much work is gonna be done? We don't know, but let's say that this is how much work is gonna be done. So this is gonna be the work of friction coming back down. We know that it's negative because it's slowing it down and so now we see here is that if that's 
If that's th that looks like that's two and a half, it looks like this guy should be about one block. So this is the speed that it should have um, at the bottom of the incline. So then, now that we've set this up, I could, because this is very, very similar to the previous calculation, I could then do the following thing here. I'm now gonna apply the work energy theorem. So if I apply the work energy theorem, what am I seeing here? Well, I could see from my picture, it should be what? UG2 minus the work of the frictional force equals the kinetic energy at three. But since we've already done this calculation, I'm going to call this height right here, from here to here, I'm going to call this Y prime 2 because it's a different height at position two here. So then I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write this as what? Mg y2 prime minus the frictional force times the distance here. But we know what the distance that it's going to travel here. The distance, I'm gonna call this d prime, and then this should equal one half mv three squared. Now let's call this y2 prime. y2 prime should be related to x2 prime times the sine of 40 degrees. But what's x2 prime? Well, that should be 55 plus 13, which gives me 0 0.68 meters. So I now know my height, I know my distance, and of course, I know that my frictional force from what we have already talked about is this guy. So now all I have to do is substitute everything into this thing here. And if I do this, here's what I get here. So I'm gonna solve for V3. So if I solve for V3, you could see here that I do this here. I'm gonna say that V3, I'm, I have everything under the side, so I'm gonna get mg y2 prime is then going to be what? x2 prime sine of 40 minus mu of k mg cosine of 40 times x2 prime. And then I'm going to divide this by 1 half m. Now, we've already saw here previously that the masses all cancel out and we don't need that. So if I punch everything into here, remember the, the big new one here is this guy. So if we punch all of these into this equation, we get 2.7 meters per second for V3.